The Battle of Adwa, also known as Adoa, or sometimes by the Italian name Adwa, was fought on March 1, 1896 between the Ethiopian Empire and the Kingdom of Italy near the town of Adwa, Ethiopia, in Tigray. It was the climactic battle of the First Italo-Ethiopian War, securing Ethiopian sovereignty. As the 20th century approached, most of Africa had been carved up among the European powers. The two independent exceptions were the Young Republic of Liberia on the west coast of the continent and the Ethiopian Empire in the strategic Horn of Africa. The newly unified Kingdom of Italy was a relative newcomer to the colonial scramble for Africa. Italy had two recently obtained African territories, Eritrea and Somaliland. Both were near Ethiopia on the Horn of Africa and both were impoverished. Italy sought to improve its position in Africa by conquering Ethiopia and joining it with its two territories. Background In 1889, the Italians signed the Treaty of Wakhale with then Negus Menelik of Shewa. The treaty ceded territories previously part of Ethiopia, namely the provinces of Bogos, Hamasian, Akel Guzai, Suri, and parts of Tigray. In return, Italy promised Menelik's rule, financial assistance and military supplies. A dispute later arose over the interpretation of the two versions of the document. The Italian language version of the disputed Article 17 of the treaty stated that the Emperor of Ethiopia was obliged to conduct all foreign affairs through Italian authorities. This would in effect make Ethiopia a protectorate of the Kingdom of Italy. The Amharic version of the article however stated that the Emperor could use the good offices of the Kingdom of Italy in his relations with foreign nations if he wished. However, the Italian diplomats claimed that the original Amharic text included the clause and that Menelik knowingly signed a modified copy of the treaty. The Italian government decided on a military solution to force Ethiopia to abide by the Italian version of the treaty. As a result, Italy and Ethiopia faced off in what was later to be known as the First Italo-Ethiopian War. In December 1894, Bata led a rebellion against the Italians in Akel Guzai, in what was then Italian-controlled Eritrea. Units of General Aresti Baratieri's army under Major Pietro Toselli crushed the rebellion and killed Bata. The Italian army then occupied the Tigrayan capital, Adwa. In January 1895, Baratieri's army went on to defeat Raz Mangesha Johannes in the Battle of Kodit, forcing Mangesha to retreat further south. By late 1895, Italian forces had advanced deep into Ethiopian territory. On December 7, 1895, Raz Makonin, Raz Welibe Tool and Raz Mangeshi Johannes commanding a larger Ethiopian group of Menelik's vanguard annihilated a small Italian unit at the Battle of Amba Alagi. The Italians were then forced to withdraw to more defensible positions in Tigray, where the two main armies faced each other. By late February 1896, supplies on both sides were running low. General Aresti Baratieri, commander of the Italian forces, knew the Ethiopian forces had been living off the land, and once the supplies of the local peasants were exhausted, Emperor Menelik's army would begin to melt away. However, the Italian government insisted that General Baratieri act. On the evening of 29th of February, Baratieri met with his brigadiers Matteo Albertone, Giuseppe Aramondi, Vittorio Dabormida, and Giuseppe Elena, concerning their next steps. He opened the meeting on a negative note, revealing to his brigadiers that provisions would be exhausted in less than five days, and suggested retreating, perhaps as far back as Asmara. His subordinates argued forcefully for an attack, insisting that to retreat at this point would only worsen the poor morale. Dabormida exclaiming, Italy would prefer the loss of two or three thousand men to a dishonorable retreat. Barat Yeri delayed making a decision for a few more hours, claiming that he needed to wait for some last-minute intelligence, but in the end announced that the attack would start the next morning at nine o'clock. His troops began their march to their starting positions shortly after midnight. Forces assembled. The Italian army comprised four brigades totaling 17,978 troops, with 56 artillery pieces. However, it is likely that fewer fought in the actual battle on the Italian side. Harold Marcus notes that several thousand soldiers were needed in support roles and to guard the lines of communication to the rear. He accordingly estimates that the Italian force at Adwa consisted of 14,923 effectives. One brigade under General Albertone was made up of Eritrean Ascari led by Italian officers. 
The remaining three brigades were Italian units under Brigadiers Dabormida, Elena, and Aramondi. While these included elite Bersaglieri, Alpini and Cacciatori units, a large proportion of the troops were inexperienced conscripts recently drafted from metropolitan regiments in Italy into newly formed Di Formazione battalions for service in Africa. As Chris Prouty describes, They had inadequate maps, old model guns, poor communication equipment and inferior footgear for the rocky ground. The newer Carcano Model 91 rifles were not issued because Baratieri, under constraints to be economical, wanted to use up the old cartridges, morale was low as the veterans were homesick and the newcomers were too inexperienced to have any esprit de corps. There was a shortage of mules and saddles. Estimates for the Ethiopian forces under Menelik range from a low of 73,000 to a high of over 120,000, outnumbering the Italians by an estimated five or six times. The forces were divided among Emperor Menelik, Empress Tetu Betul, Raz Wale Betul, Raz Mangesha Atticum, Raz Mangesha Johannes, Raz Alula Angita, Raz Mikel of Vulo, Raz Makonan Volda Mikel, Fiorari Gebe Ehu, and Negus Tekel Hamano Tesema. In addition, the armies were followed by a similar number of traditional peasant followers who supplied the army, as had been done for centuries. Most of the army was composed of riflemen, a significant percentage of which were in Menelik's reserve, however, there were also a significant number of cavalry and infantry only armed with lances. The Ethiopian army had a small team of Russian advisors and volunteers commanded by the Kuban Cossack army officer N.S. Leontiev. Battle on the night of 29 February and the early morning of 1 March three Italian brigades advanced separately towards Adwa over narrow mountain tracks, while a fourth remained camped. David Levering Lewis states that the Italian battle plan called for three columns to march in parallel formation to the crests of three mountains, Dabormita commanding on the right, Albertone on the left, and Aramondi in the center, with a reserve under Elena following behind Aramondi. The supporting crossfire each column could give the others made the soldiers as deadly as razored shears. Albertone's brigade was to set the pace for the others. He was to position himself on the summit known as Kadane Merit, which would give the Italians the high ground from which to meet the Ethiopians. However, the three leading Italian brigades had become separated during their overnight march and at dawn were spread across several miles of very difficult terrain. Their sketchy maps caused Albertone to mistake one mountain for Kadane Merit, and when a scout pointed out his mistake, Albertone advanced directly into Razalula's position. Unbeknownst to General Baratieri, Emperor Menelik knew his troops had exhausted the ability of the local peasants to support them and had planned to break camp the next day, 2nd of March. The Emperor had risen early to begin prayers for divine guidance when spies from Razalula, his chief military advisor, brought him news that the Italians were advancing. The emperor summoned the separate armies of his nobles and with the empress Tetu beside him, ordered his forces forward. Negus Tekel Hamano commanded the right wing, Razalula the left, and Ross's Makonan and Mengesha the center, with Raz Mikel at the head of the Oromo cavalry, the emperor and his consort remained with the reserve. The Ethiopian forces positioned themselves on the hills overlooking the Adwa Valley, in perfect position to receive the Italians, who were exposed and vulnerable to crossfire. Albertone's Ascari Brigade was the first to encounter the onrush of Ethiopians at 6 o'clock, near Kadani Merit, where the Ethiopians had managed to set up their mountain artillery. Accounts of the Ethiopian artillery deployed at Adwa differ, Russian advisor Leonid Artemanov wrote that it comprised 42 Russian mountain guns supported by a team of 15 advisors, but British historians suggest that the Ethiopian guns were Hotchis and Maxim pieces captured from the Egyptians or purchased from French and other European suppliers. Albertone's heavily outnumbered Ascaris held their position for two hours until Albertone's capture, and under Ethiopian pressure the survivors sought refuge with Aramondi's brigade. Aramondi's brigade beat back the Ethiopians who repeatedly charged the Italian position for three hours with gradually fading strength until Menelik released his reserve of 25,000 shones and swamped the Italian defenders. Two companies of Bersaglieri who arrived at the same moment could not help and were cut down. Dabormida's Italian brigade had moved to support Albertone but was unable to reach him in time. Cut off from the remainder of the Italian army. Dabormita began a fighting retreat towards friendly positions. However, he inadvertently marched his command into a narrow valley where the Oromo cavalry under Raz Mikel slaughtered his brigade, 
while shouting Ibalgium. Ibalgium. Reap. Reap. Dabormida's remains were never found, although his brother learned from an old woman living in the area that she had given water to a mortally wounded Italian officer, a chief, a great man with spectacles and a watch, and golden stars. The remaining two brigades under Baratieri himself were outflanked and destroyed piecemeal on the slopes of Mount Bella. Menelik watched as Gojam forces under the command of Tekel Hamanot made quick work of the last intact Italian brigade. By noon, the survivors of the Italian army were in full retreat and the battle was over. Immediate aftermath. The Italians suffered about 7,000 killed and 1,500 wounded in the battle and subsequent retreat back into Eritrea, with 3,000 taken prisoner. Ethiopian losses have been estimated around 4,000 to 5,000 killed and 8,000 wounded. In their flight to Eritrea, the Italians left behind all of their artillery and 11,000 rifles, as well as most of their transport. As Paul B. Henson notes, Baratieri's army had been completely annihilated while Menelik's was intact as a fighting force and gained thousands of rifles and a great deal of equipment from the fleeing Italians. The 3,000 Italian prisoners, who included General Albertone, appear to have been treated as well as could be expected under difficult circumstances, though about 200 died of their wounds in captivity. However, 800 captured Ascaris, regarded as traitors by the Ethiopians, had their right hands and left feet amputated. Augustus Wilde records when he visited the battlefield months after the battle, the pile of severed hands and feet was still visible, a rotting heap of ghastly remnants. Further, many had not survived their punishment, Wilde writing how the neighborhood of Adwo was full of their freshly dead bodies, they had generally crawled to the banks of the streams to quench their thirst, where many of them lingered unattended and exposed to the elements until death put an end to their sufferings. There does not appear to be any foundation for reports that some Italians were castrated and these may reflect confusion with the atrocious treatment of the Ascari prisoners. Barak Yeri was relieved of his command and later charged with preparing an inexcusable plan of attack and for abandoning his troops in the field. He was acquitted on these charges but was described by the court-martial judges as being entirely unfitted for his command. Public opinion in Italy was outraged. Chris Prouty offers a panoramic overview of the response in Italy to the news. When news of the calamity reached Italy there were street demonstrations in most major cities. In Rome, to prevent these violent protests, the universities and theatres were closed. Police were called out to disperse rock throwers in front of Prime Minister Crispy's residence. Crispy resigned on 9 March. Troops were called out to quell demonstrations in Naples. In Pavia, crowds built barricades on the railroad tracks to prevent a troop train from leaving the station. The Association of Women of Rome, Turin, Milan and Pavia called for the return of all military forces in Africa. Funeral masses were intoned for the known and unknown dead. Families began sending to the newspapers letters they had received before Adwa in which their menfolk described their poor living conditions and their fears at the size of the army they were going to face. King Umberto declared his birthday, 14th of March, a day of mourning. Italian communities in St. Petersburg, London New York, Chicago, Buenos Aires and Jerusalem collected money for the families of the dead and for the Italian Red Cross. The Russian support for Ethiopia led to the advent of a Russian Red Cross mission. The Russian mission was a military mission conceived as a medical support for the Ethiopian troops. It arrived in Addis Ababa some three months after Menelik's Adwa victory. Follow-up to Ethiopian victory Emperor Menelik decided not to follow up on his victory by attempting to drive the routed Italians out of their colony. The victorious emperor limited his demands to little more than the abrogation of the Treaty of Wakale. In the context of the prevailing balance of power, the emperor's crucial goal was to preserve Ethiopian independence. In addition, Ethiopia had just begun to emerge from a long and brutal famine. Harold Marcus reminds us that the army was restive over its long service in the field, short of rations, and the short rains which would bring all travel to a crawl would soon start to fall. At the time, Menelik claimed a shortage of cavalry horses with which to harry the fleeing soldiers. Chris Prouty observes that a failure of nerve on the part of Menelik has been alleged by both Italian and Ethiopian sources. Lewis believes that it was his far-sighted certainty that total annihilation of Baratieri and a sweep into Eritrea would force the Italian people to turn a bungled colonial war into a national crusade that stayed his hand. As a direct result of the battle, Italy signed the Treaty of Addis Ababa, 
recognizing Ethiopia as an independent state. Almost 40 years later, on October 3, 1935, after the League of Nations's weak response to the Abyssinia crisis, the Italians launched a new military campaign endorsed by Benito Mussolini, the Second Italo-Abyssinian War. This time the Italians employed vastly superior military technology such as tanks and aircraft, as well as chemical warfare, the Ethiopian forces were soundly defeated by May 1936. Following the war, Italy occupied Ethiopia for five years, 1936-41, before eventually being driven out during World War II by British Empire and Ethiopian Patriot forces. Significance The confrontation between Italy and Ethiopia at Adwo was a fundamental turning point in Ethiopian history, writes Hansa. On a similar note, the Ethiopian historian Barazud observed that few events in the modern period have brought Ethiopia to the attention of the world as has the victory at Adwa. The Russian Empire had sold some artillery pieces to the Ethiopian forces and paid enthusiastic compliments to the Ethiopian success. One of the documents of that time stated the victory immediately gained the general sympathy of Russian society and it continued to grow. The unique outlook which polyethnic Russia exhibited to Ethiopia disturbed many supporters of European nationalism during the 20th century. The Russian Cossack captain Nikolai Leontiev with a small escort was present at the battle as an observer. This defeat of a colonial power and the ensuing recognition of African sovereignty became rallying points for later African nationalists during their struggle for decolonization, as well as activists and leaders of the Pan-African movement. As the Afrocentric scholar Molfa Sandy explains, After the victory over Italy in 1896, Ethiopia acquired a special importance in the eyes of Africans as the only surviving African state. After Edoa, Ethiopia became emblematic of African valor and resistance, the bastion of prestige and hope to thousands of Africans who were experiencing the full shock of European conquest and were beginning to search for an answer to the myth of African inferiority. On the other hand, many writers have pointed out how this battle was a humiliation for the Italian military. One student of Ethiopia, Donald N. Levine, points out that for the Italians Adwa became a national trauma which demagogic leaders strove to avenge. It also played no little part in motivating Italy's revanchist adventure in 1935. Levine also noted that the victory gave encouragement to isolationist and conservative strains that were deeply rooted in Ethiopian culture, strengthening the hand of those who would strive to keep Ethiopia from adopting techniques imported from the modern West, resistances with which both Menelik and Raz Teferi slash Haile Selassie would have to contend.